Hi right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna be looking at dominant strategies and how to determine whether one firm or the other has, or one player or the other has a dominant strategy. All right, so let's start by defining dom dominant strategy. A player has a dominant strategy when they have a single course of action is what is best for them, regardless of what the other player does. In this context, that means that if Coke, for instance, were to have a dominant strategy, that would mean that they would do the same thing, either advertise or don't advertise, regardless of what Pepsi does, that thing is still their choice. So without looking at the numbers, because I don't even remember what's on there, but for instance, that would mean that if Coke had a dominant strategy, they should always advertise, regardless of whether Pepsi advertises or doesn't advertise, it won't matter, because a dominant strategy means that that play or that choice is the best thing for them to do, regardless of what the other company or other player is doing. So. Let's go ahead and look at this and see if we can find a dominant strategy. All right, so we have Pepsi. And I'll go ahead and do this again, just like on the introductory video, just to make sure that we're good with which is which on here until um, we're more comfortable. Pepsi, since they're the horizontal axis here, they are going to be represented by the first number. So these are Pepsi's options. They can either earn $25, so that's a little p, $60, zero dollars or fifty dollars all right coke the vertical they have that second number from left to right is coke so I have a little c next to all four of their options all right um, you can feel free to do this if it helps you but eventually like this should just come second nature hopefully so what we need to do is we're going to go through these let's we're going to start with pepsi all right we want to know if pepsi has a dominant strategy what that means is we want to know what should pepsi do depending on what Coke does. If Coke advertises, what's better for Pepsi to do? Then we wanna know if Coke doesn't advertise, what's better for Pepsi to do? And if those two things are the same, if both answers are the same, that means that Pepsi has a dominant strategy. If they are not the same, then they don't have a dominant strategy. It is as simple as that. So let's get right into it. So Pepsi can advertise or not advertise. Coke has the same two options, advertise, or don't advertise. So what we're gonna be looking at here is, let's start with Coke advertising. We wanna know what should Pepsi do if Coke advertises, all right? So we have our two payoffs for Pepsi are the numbers on the left. Pepsi can either earn, so if Coke advertises, Pepsi will earn $25 if they also advertise, or they will earn $0 if they don't advertise. All we need to do is compare which number is greater. So this is actually really, really simple. $25 is greater than $0. So therefore, Pepsi, in this case, if Coke advertises, Pepsi is better off also advertising. So I'm gonna put a little check there. So remember what we're comparing. We're comparing 25 to zero because those are Pepsi's two options if Coke advertises. Now the next question becomes, all right, well, what if Coke doesn't advertise? If Coke doesn't advertise, Pepsi has again two options. They can either earn $60 by advertising or they can earn $50 by not advertising. 60 is greater than 50, so they should do that one. Put a little check mark by that. Now what we notice here is that regardless of what Coke does, when Coke advertises, Pepsi should advertise. When Coke doesn't advertise, guess what? Pepsi should advertise still. So Pepsi has a dominant strategy and that dominant strategy is to advertise, always advertise. So we now know what Pepsi's gonna pick. Pepsi is going to advertise. That is their dominant strategy, regardless of what Coke does. Again, because 25 is greater than zero, so they advertise. 60 is greater than 50, again, they will advertise. So that's how you find Pepsi or the horizontal axis. All right, Coca-Cola, we're gonna do the exact same thing, okay? Except now we're gonna be looking at the second number. So in this case, we now wanna know, well, what should Coke do if Pepsi advertises? So now I want you to notice that we're comparing horizontal numbers. That's, that's the trickiest thing to remember is whether you're going vertical or going horizontal. So in this, when we were doing Pepsi over here, we we're comparing two vertical numbers, right? Because Coke was advertising. So we wanna know what should Pepsi do when Coke advertises? Now it's the opposite. We wanna know what should Coke do when Pepsi advertises? So that means we have to stay in this horizontal row. Okay, so we're gonna be comparing $25 if Coke advertises to $0 if Coke chooses not to advertise. 
Again, clearly $25 is greater than zero. So if Pepsi advertises, Coke is better off also advertising, okay? If Pepsi decides not to advertise, we're gonna compare again, $60 here for Coke or $50 for Coke. 60 if they advertise also, 50 if they don't advertise. So 60 is greater than 50. So that's going to be Coke strategy. Now what do we notice? For Coke, both of them are in the advertise column. So for Coke, always advertising is better than not advertising. This means that Coca-Cola also has a dominant strategy. That dominant strategy is to advertise. I'm gonna put the check mark above there. So what's gonna happen in our payoff matrix? We're gonna end up in this first quadrant where they were both going to earn a profit of $25 because that is their dominant strategy. Uh, one thing I didn't touch on and I probably should have in the intro video, notice that this is not the best outcome for Coke and Pepsi, is it? The best outcome is if, the best joint outcome is if neither of them advertise. They each earn $50 profits, double the profits they're gonna earn with their dominant strategies. But their dominant strategy is based on that idea, if they don't advertise and the other one does advertise, their profits go to zero. And so as a result of that, and the fact that zero is less than 25, and the fact that 50 is less than 60, they are both enticed to advertise, which is actually going to cause their profits to drop in the long run because of that huge amount of money that they now have to spend on commercials and advertisements. All right, so that's the basic idea. So here you have an example where both Coke and Pepsi have a dominant strategy. So our market will be in equilibrium in this quadrant here with $25 profit for each one. All right, until next time, this has been a La Money production.